Last night, the president gave his speech. One of the people who has been keeping close track on, on this situation, uh, in fact, his, uh, his call tallies have been showing up regularly over Democratic Underground and other places as he's tweeted them out, is one of the, one of the I believe, one of the founders, certainly one of the, one of the, one of the ringleaders uh, of the Progressive Caucus in the House of Representatives, one of the uh, senior members and, and most influential, and one of my favorite members, uh, arguably my favorite member of the House, U.S. House of Representatives. I remember when Bernie Sanders and I started doing this show, when Bernie started showing up on the show, and I lived in Vermont back 10 years ago, Bernie said, you got to get to know Peter DeFazio. He's the smartest guy in Congress. Well, he's with us. Congressman DeFazio, welcome back. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Actually, uh, just chatted with Bernie last night, and uh, we're going to get together for dinner next week. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. He, I mean, he genuinely did say that. I, he, he was like, you know, he's the only guy you need to know in the House. You know, and this is when he was your colleague in the House. <laughs> he, he yeah, uh, well, I anyway, share his. Sometimes that's not to an advantage around here to know too much. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyhow, how Defazio D E F A Z said that to me actually, like they said, you know, you read too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Defazio.house.gov is the website. So, Congressman, uh, I'm curious your thoughts on, you know, the arc of this previous week on what the president had to say last night. And, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to uh, even bring 9-11 to the conversation since this is the anniversary of it. Well, uh, I, I, I don't think one could describe it as an arc. I mean, an arc to me is somewhat delicate or, you know, I mean, it, it's, a, and it has, or symmetry. Uh, I wouldn't say that the uh, White House position on uh, why, uh, how, and to what extent uh, we should uh, attack uh, Syria has fallen an arc. I'd say it's more like a uh, series of uh, jagged ups and downs and then a few turns and twists and changes of direction. It's a bad so, etch-a-sketch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit more like an etch-a-sketch. Uh, you know, one of the most interesting things, I, I just you know, there's so much information, it's always hard to keep track of, but I just <clears throat> got today, finally, a copy of a letter to uh, Senator Levin, uh, written by uh, General Dempsey, uh, before all of this took place, mm -hmm. uh, pointing to the uh, pitfalls and problems of military action in Syria, hmm. uh, and talking about uh, it being an act of war, obviously, uh, and then talking about uh, unintended effects and uh, spillovers and things, things that uh, they aren't talking about anymore. Whoa. And General Dempsey is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, isn't he? Uh, he is. Uh, some would observe in the last briefing we were in with him that uh, his body language looked somewhat uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, people who know, I mean, people who've actually been through wars. Colin Powell was actually through a war. Dwight Eisenhower had been through a war. Jack Kennedy had been through a war. His, his uh, PT boat was cut in half. Um, they've, they have always been far more reluctant to uh, thump their chests and, and uh, you know, call out the dogs of war. And, well, anyway. I, it, well, in this case, you know, I, I would say that uh, the Congress is pretty uh, darn reluctant, particularly, yeah. uh, particularly the House. Um, you know, I got to give the president credit that he decided to come to Congress because, actually, I just reintroduced uh, my uh, my fix to the War Powers Act today. Mm -hmm. uh, a previous Congress, uh, 1974, in reaction to Nixon's illegal bombing of Cambodia, uh, passed the War Powers Act. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there was a House version and Senate version, and the weaker version won out, which allows any president to attack anybody any time. Uh, and then just inform Congress afterwards and ask uh, for retroactively for authority. Uh, we need to fix that. Uh, you know, so in this case, actually, Obama, under the law as written by Congress, which I do not believe is a, a true interpretation of the Constitution and war powers, could go forward without authority. Uh, he chose to come to Congress, give him credit for that. Uh, but uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't support uh, the mission as explained and don't believe it's going to resolve the issues. And, and one of the issues uh, Dempsey talks about in his letter is, well, what if one of our objectives was to go after his chemical weapons stockpile? Uh, collateral damage, uh, big problem, uh, couldn't get all of it, uh, would be tremendously uh, expensive, would require, uh, you know, a massive effort on the part of the U.S., none of which is, what's being talked about here. And then you have 
them saying, well, we're not taking sides in the Civil War, we're not going to get involved, except John McCain put language in the Senate version of the bill that is essentially disguised, we want re- regime change. So, uh, you know, it's all very problematic. I'm really pushing and hoping, and a lot of other people around here are now, too, that this diplomatic effort works out. Yeah, plus this administration, correct me if I'm wrong, right now, I believe with the authority of Congress, is arming the rebels, which includes, uh, although they're uncomfortable with the, the reality of this, which includes members of al-Qaeda, the, the, the people who are fighting against, maybe they're not arming al-Qaeda, but the, the rebels, the generic rebels, the large R rebels, includes al-Qaeda. Well, there's al-Nusra, uh, al-Qaeda offshoots, uh, affiliates, of uh, allies, I mean, there's an incredibly eclectic group. Uh, uh, you know, I, I well, I got to be careful what I say. The, uh, they're, they're, I, I read in the newspaper that we are training some people. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've read that too, and and that uh, you know, I I would say that's taking a taking a position in a civil war. I think we're already up to our up to our hips in the civil war. Right. Um, we you just know, never seen anything quite like this. I got to tell you, in terms of spontaneous. Uh, Opposition, yeah. uh, you know, not a big organized phone-in campaign, email campaign, right. petitions. Uh, I've had uh, now thirty-five hundred and seventy-one calls, uh, seventy-one in favor. Wow, wow! Now we just have a minute left. Uh, we're talking with Peter, uh, Congressman Peter DeFazio of Oregon, and uh, uh, Congressman, thoughts on nine eleven, on the anniversary of nine eleven. Well, uh, you know the the Republicans in uh, do like to make a big deal out of Benghazi, which was a, a, a screw-up. They don't admit that they were also somewhat culpable since for years they've been cutting the security budget for the State Department, uh, uh, you know, embassies overseas. But mm-hmm. anyway, be that as it may, uh, you know, but if they're going to, you know, sort of bang on Benghazi as, you know, make, you know, are this president making us vulnerable to attack, what about George Bush and not reading the memo from Condoleezza Rice about, uh, you know, the uh, chatter and the potential of an imminent attack on the U.S.? So, uh, you know, it was a very, very sad uh, uh, thing that, that happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, it uh, led to both uh, initially some intended consequences, go after al-Qaeda, the Taliban, uh, Osama bin Laden, and unintended consequences, Bush diverting us into Iraq, which was a disaster. And now the extended uh, nation-building effort in Afghanistan, which uh, isn't going well either. Right. Congressman Peter DeFazio, always great to have you with us, sir. Thank you. Thank you. DeFazio.house.gov is his website. We'll be back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Peter DeFazio, one of the great guys in the House of Representatives. We'll be right back with uh, a word from Jerry Falwell. <laughs> 